Adobe Flash is a multimedia technology that powered some of the most iconic websites in the internet's early days, like Newgrounds and Homestar Runner. It allowed content to be viewable whether you were on Mac or PC or Linux, and it became so popular that almost every website had some form of Flash technology. But today, the internet looks a lot different. Flash has gone extinct, and Apple had a lot to do with its demise. So in this video, I'm going to explain the history of Flash and how Apple accelerated its death. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to help decide which topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and voting polls like this one will show up in your mobile activity feed. So Flash has a long history, starting in 1993 as a piece of software called SmartSketch. Designed as a graphics editor for the Mac that was optimized for pen computing, which was a popular trend at the time. But the stylus computing hype fizzled out after a couple years as the internet became the next big thing. So SmartSketch was rewritten as a web animation tool called Future Splash, released in 1995. It allowed web developers to add custom animations to their websites, which was a novel concept, and Future Splash eventually attracted the attention of a software company called Macromedia in 1996, who purchased Future Splash and shortened its name to Flash. Macromedia was vital in modernizing the software and encouraging widespread adoption. In fact, Flash became so capable that it wasn't only being used for website animations, but to create entire websites themselves, although there were drawbacks. Search engines couldn't read content that was hidden inside a Flash website, so search engine optimization was severely crippled. And because the entire website had to be preloaded, Flash sites ended up being much slower than HTML. But because of its expansive functionality, Flash was quickly adopted by web designers looking to do more than what HTML and CSS allowed. This Flash uprising gave way to experiences never seen before on the internet. Websites like Newgrounds and YouTube were possible because of Flash game animation and video technology. The importance of Flash in the internet's history cannot be understated. In 2005, Adobe acquired Macromedia and became the sole owner of Flash. The technology had become ubiquitous. Web browsers automatically included Flash in their downloads, and it was the number one tool of web developers. But despite its popularity, Flash still had problems. And that's what discouraged Apple from including the technology on their mobile devices. You see, the Mac had supported Flash just like PCs, but when it came to the iPhone, Apple decided not to support it and they had some pretty good reasons why. Adobe actually tried to get a mobile version of Flash working on the iPhone before its launch, which would optimize power consumption and patch its security flaws, but this mobile version of Flash failed to materialize. This put Apple in a difficult position. They could support Flash anyway, giving users access to many of their favorite Flash-based websites, but those sites would quickly drain the iPhone's battery and even crash its web browser altogether. So to prevent this instability, Apple decided not to support Flash on the iPhone, and Adobe appeared okay with the decision, at least initially. Users weren't too upset with the lack of Flash support, likely because they used apps to access websites rather than the Safari browser. But the drama between Adobe and Apple came to a head with the release of iPad. Steve Jobs called the tablet the most important thing he'd ever done, and based on its sales success, he was right. One million units were sold in just 28 days, compared to the iPhone's 74 days. iPad was actually the fastest selling consumer electronic device ever. But there was one problem analysts and journalists kept bringing up, its lack of flash support. And Adobe wanted as much attention brought to the issue as possible. With mobile web browsing on the rise and desktop browsing declining, the relevance of Flash was being threatened. And Apple had been focusing their efforts on encouraging development of HTML5 as not only an alternative to Flash, but also an eventual replacement. And that made it much easier to do things like create your own website. With Flash, the process was extremely complicated and required hiring a web developer, but now we have Squarespace, which allows you to create your own high-quality website by using their simple drag-and-drop interface. Plus, Squarespace automatically optimizes your website for mobile devices, 
so you don't have to waste time creating a desktop and mobile version of your site. They have built-in analytics tools that report page views, traffic sources, time on site, most read content, and more. You can create an exclusive paid membership area just like on YouTube, and you can even create an entire e-commerce store to sell physical or digital products. I actually did that a couple years ago to sell merch, and it was way easier than I imagined. Also, if you Google Apple Explained, my website is one of the first results. That's because Squarespace has the best search engine optimization tools that'll make your website more visible to more people. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Apple Explained to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now Apple didn't push for Flash to be replaced because of some personal vendetta against Adobe. It was simply because HTML5 offered a better browsing experience, especially when it came to mobile devices. With HTML5, there are no plugins to install, it doesn't require as much processing power, and it consumes less battery. But perhaps the biggest benefit is that HTML5 is open source, so Apple can directly contribute to its development without relying on Adobe to fix security holes or optimization issues. But Adobe wasn't going to let Flash go down without a fight. They immediately began criticizing Apple's devices, saying they can't access the full web because 75% of videos online were Flash, but Apple pushed back asserting that most video content was available in other formats or in iOS apps. And while that was true when it came to the iPhone, many iPad users browsed the internet with Safari rather than downloading individual apps. This made its lack of Flash support much more visible than on iPhone, since users would see holes in websites where Flash content should be. Steve Jobs was actually asked about this issue directly during an All Things Digital conference in 2010. Is it really fair or the best thing for consumers who buy, say, an iPad or an iPhone to just be abrupt? In other words, if we're in a transition where there are better things in Flash, why be abrupt and cut off consumers? Sure. I think consumers uh, outside of the valley in our industry aren't having this issue. Except when they hold up their iPad mm -hmm. and they go to a web page and there's like a hole there where a video well, would be. Well, you know, there are... They don't know, they may not know what Flash is. There are is holes in some websites, but those holes are getting plugged real fast. Uh, you know, the holes that exist now are, are ads. So I understand that's a problem They're, for some people. Not entirely. Not entirely. So while Jobs was right in saying lots of Flash content was being updated to HTML5 and therefore became visible on iPads, he avoided answering the question of entire Flash-based websites not even being accessible. It sounded like a really big flaw in the iPad at the time, and competitors like Samsung used it to their advantage when promoting their own tablets, while Adobe used it as an opportunity to create as much bad press for Apple as possible. They attacked Apple by claiming their decision to not support Flash was anti-competitive and potentially illegal, that Apple was protecting the App Store by preventing content from being delivered through Flash, and that Apple preferred closed systems, unlike Flash, which they claimed was open. But in reality, the opposite was true. Flash was wholly owned by Adobe, who had control over every change made to the product, while HTML5, the technology Apple was encouraging developers to adopt, was literally open source. Anyone could contribute to it, make changes, or add features. Adobe never filed a lawsuit against Apple, but their accusations were strong enough that Steve Jobs was forced to publicly respond. He wrote a letter called Thoughts on Flash, where he thoroughly outlined why Apple decided not to support the product on iOS. He wrote, Flash was designed for PCs using mice, not for touchscreens using fingers. For example, many Flash websites rely on rollovers, which pop up menus or other elements when the mouse arrow hovers over a specific spot. Apple's revolutionary multi-touch interface doesn't use a mouse, and there's no concept of a rollover. Most Flash websites will need to be rewritten to support touch-based devices. If developers need to rewrite their Flash websites, why not use modern technologies like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript? He ended the letter by saying, New open standards created in the mobile era, such as HTML5, will win on mobile devices, and PCs too. Perhaps Adobe should focus more on creating great HTML5 tools for the future, and less on criticizing Apple for leaving the past behind. 
And while Jobs managed to predict the future with stunning accuracy, that letter didn't include all the reasons why Apple ditched Flash. Six years later, it was revealed in a series of tweets from Bob Burrow, who used to be a software development manager at Apple, that the technological issues with Flash was only one part of the equation. The other had everything to do with their CEO, Shantanu Narayan. According to Burrow, Apple's stated reasons for not supporting Flash were poor UI and excessive power consumption. However, Steve Jobs explained to the team at Apple that the main reason was that Shantanu Narayan would not take his phone calls. He conceded that fixing bugs in the software were mere engineering problems. However, without an open dialogue with Adobe, he couldn't count on them to do it. But despite all the drama surrounding the lack of Flash support on iPad, it didn't seem to stop customers from buying it. The iPad continued to dominate the tablet market, and the issue became less and less relevant as websites started transitioning away from Flash to HTML5, just as Jobs predicted. Eventually, Adobe faced the music and announced in 2017 that they'd stop supporting Flash in 2020, which they did on December 31st, and they blocked Flash content from running completely on January 12th, 2021. So that is how Apple helped kill Flash. Thanks for watching till the end, and don't forget to subscribe to help decide which topics I cover in the future.